Hey guys, this is Tony, and this is Tea Time with Tony, where we interview Nate Mills about real estate and all sorts of fun stuff. Do you do like a little intro or you're like, hey, it's tea time with Tony. I think I remember you doing that. Yeah, I do. Um, and I will, but Sam, Sam, you know, Sam Higginhauser, yeah. he, he gave me feedback. He said, it's not good. To just get right into it. Yeah. He said he likes hit and play and it's just already, they're talking. He's yeah, like, I agree. Like the, I agree. Just, when it's in a podcast to to format. Him. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> and we're not cool enough to have any intros. We, we accepted that a long time ago, Bo and I. For yeah. yeah. Okay, well then. Yeah, we're already started then. We'll nice. get right into it. Um, but I will say, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do you got a do you got a yin and yang earring going on right here too? <laughs> Who am I? What am I even doing here? That's funny. Okay, so um, first question I'm going to ask you here is hold on before we actually do this. I I wanted to save this little piece for this very moment, but. I think it's very cool how the stars aligned that, you know, you and Bo are now working together. I know, it is crazy. Like, you guys remember a couple years ago, probably three, four years ago now, the one time you two had met each other prior was at a recording session. Oh, I remember, yeah. For, I think, what was supposed to be my album at the time, whatever song, never saw the light of day, but that was like your guys' didn't. first did run. It didn't, No, it didn't, because I, no, I sounded absolutely terrible on that, that song. That was when right? I brought the Eureka over. Yep, yep. You but still it, use that? Uh, Let's threw that thing away. I don't. I don't know if we even still have it. Trav has all my recording gear. Oh, he does. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it is crazy. It is wild. I and see then, that picture pop up on my yep. on my feed from time to and time. And I took it with my first ever Apple Watch, not this one, but the one I had. Were you doing this? Or, yeah, he was remember, doing this. Remember, I was so amazed that you could use it as a you know oh, as a controller, camera. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for your phone camera. Yeah, but I just thought it was cool. Like when he moved, when he told me he was moving to Minnesota, he's like, I'm looking to get into something that you know I'm actually passionate about doing and. Yeah, it's you know, dope. Here we are. Here we are, and he's running cool the podcast. See. I was telling him he's got a. Uh, we got to get a camera on him for when he has things to say. Yeah, that and would be Mike. cool. Yep. He didn't like the idea. I wish we had. I wish you could. <laughs> you had some kind of like program between your cameras. You know how like uh, Zoom calls do that. Whoever's talking gets the. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a controller. Yeah. Be yeah. cool. That's what we were talking about getting or something like that. Um, so before we hop into it, so what we're drinking today on Tea Time with Tony is Tea Head. Tea Head. It's actually a tropical punch blend. You can go ahead and pour your Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't even poured it up yet. Well, that's how we're doing it these it days. It looks good. Yeah. yeah, look at it. It's pink. It looks flavorful. It's pink, rosé. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say the first question here, which is, you know, I didn't put these in. <laughs> this in the is book. not even the one on top. Um, so, actually, tell us something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. That most people don't know. Yeah. That's tough because I've kind of lived, you know, I've kind of just been an open book for quite some years now. I guess, you know, what, like, I'm a super, like, nature enthusiast. And, like, I mean, I, I post that kind of stuff, you know, but, like, over the past three, four years, I think I've found like even more of a love for nature and I try to spend as much time outside as possible. Even in the winter, like I'll try to be out there as much as I can be. Um, I mean, I think people know that. What is something about me? I don't know. Yeah, let's let's do some thinking here. Something that most people don't know. You're you going to start off even, with a you banger get... question like that? Yeah, exactly. I better keep these on so I look cooler than you the whole time. No, yeah, that's why I switched it it's up. A, that's just a tough question for me because I really am like an open book. I feel like, you know, everything about, I've never like not shared something about myself with at least somebody. Well, you could just say like what most people, the public don't know. Maybe it is the, that I'm, I guess, power. okay, here's, here's one. I'm more of a homebody than I think a lot of people think I am. Like I would much rather be at my house if I'm not doing something, you know, work related or with like family and friends, I would rather be at home. Um, and I think the, the public perception was like, oh, this guy used to be, you know, doing shows and all this stuff all the time. And yeah, I, I'm like a super homebody. Yeah, like it's, it's actually funny. Cause when I first met you, or at least the first time we actually like 
hung out was in a coffee shop in Burnsville with like Peanut. Yep, I remember that. Easy and yep, that was the one off thirteen. What was it? Yep. Caribou. Caribou. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you, I, I just thought you got because I maybe met you at the show maybe the night prior or something or yep. the week prior or whatever. And I thought for sure you guys were just partiers. And then you're just like, well, let's go back to my house. And then we yeah. went, we went and hung out. And you were well, I was there. back then, you know. Like, yeah, definitely. yeah, but I, it, I pictured just like where you just go to party to party to party yeah for some reason that's just how i went I through like it. a phase like that for sure where i just wanted to be out and about but that was when i lived alone i noticed that like when i lived alone you i felt lonely so yeah. i was like i want to be around more people yeah. but other than like as long as i've had you know like a roommate or now you know my wife to live with like i'd much rather be at home yeah that's like the only i know that's pretty uninteresting but that's like the only thing yeah. that maybe Home-body people name. don't know about me now they do um, let's hop into, so, you know, you had a big transition from making music into real estate. So like, why don't you just tell us a little about what led you from the transition from music to real estate? Yeah. So it's a fun story. Um, especially Bo was with me on the last headline tour that I did. Um, quite a flop of a tour that was in what 2019 i think like january or february we got back i had put out an album 2018 um towards the end of the year i think or it might have been summer but regardless we toured off that album my my manager at the time my music manager kato had like set it up um a couple good shows in there but most most of it was like all right why am i still doing this at you know 28 years old like by the time we get home, you got fifteen hundred dollars in your pocket. You got to pay off a van. <laughs> like, cool. I made seven hundred dollars for you know fifteen days of my time. Um, so obviously, it just wasn't sustainable for me, especially like wanting to start a family. Um, I wasn't quite engaged at that time, but I knew that that was coming up with my now wife. Um, and yeah, I just I was always a house nerd, so people always ask why real estate, and it's one of those things like I've never I've done everything my entire life to not have to work a nine to five. I get that that works for some people. I am not one of those people. Like I would much rather have something that I could at least still be creative in and that I was passionate about. And I think um, it is a rewarding job, uh, you know, working in real estate and helping people navigate you know biggest purchase and sale of their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of headache that comes with it, as you can probably imagine. Um, yeah. But it's rewarding at the end of the day when you finally get it closed and they're happy with where they're living. So that's kind of, yeah, like a little background on that. What uh, So the transition, I'm curious as to like what that was like. Was it hard for you? It literally happened like this. We came off that tour. I went into Half Price Books in Apple Valley. And I see a book that's like real estate investing. And it's just sticking out. Like Why do you, why'd you go in there? Was it to look for? No, I went in there with Brady and I, and yeah, we were just looking at books like, you know, like Greek mythology, whatever weird stuff that we (laughs) like. And that book was literally hanging out of like, you know what I mean? It was pulled out more than the other books around it. And it was in like, you know, business section or whatever. And see it, real estate investing, I pull it out and I'm like, I tell Brady, I'm like, you know, I've always wanted to get into real estate. And then for whatever reason, the idea stuck with me. I went home pretty sure I signed up for real estate courses through Kaplan that night and yeah they sent me my books book? no I never read the book I Did started you buy it, it? You bought yeah it? I bought the book I bought like two other real estate books too because like in that moment the idea hit me like real estate's the thing for me because I thought you know if anything I'd still be able to work on music if I was it's kind of like one foot in one foot out um but then the more I learned like throughout the courses too, and like I just became like super house nerd and I, I really liked it. What do you like about houses? I can't explain it since like I was young. Like I just always had a fascination like seeing how people like from decor, from, you know, like, um, you know, some of the finishings in houses, you know, paint colors, carpet types. Like I just like it. Um, I can't explain it. I just think it's houses are cool everyone can be unique and a lot of them are super cookie cutter and look exactly the same as a million other houses did you get into have you invested in any obviously you have not not yet like that that's coming this year so i've been torn i've been saying i'm going to and i actually met with good old nate o'brien um a few weeks ago probably a month ago yeah we sat down for coffee because we've kind of been going back and forth and like i wanted to pick his brain a little bit but anyway, I've been torn between like a long-term rental, you know, like getting, you know, a duplex, renting out both sides of it or a short-term, you know, Airbnb style. Mm. Um, 
And I think I'm going to go, I think I'm going to start with a short term rental. That makes sense. Obviously, if the right opportunity presented itself and there was, you know, property that, you know, I could hold for a while, I would do that as well. So do you rent, do you own the place you're living in though? Yeah, I do. Okay. So you have a well, house. Well, you never really own it until your 30 years is up, but yeah, yeah I have yeah, a lot yeah. of equity into it now. Okay. Um, so you haven't gotten into actual investing in real estate. I, know I have that, not yet. I know that Nate talks about it's like action is like the biggest thing, just hopping in. Yep. Don't question yep. too much. And he like really motivated me like when we talked because he's somebody who's done it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. my broker, Travis, kept his first house ever um, over in Invergrove. It's a single family rambler and he's got that rented out now. And, you know, he's like, he just bought our building too that we're in. So he owns yeah, a little bit of commercial really cool. real estate too. But even him, he's like, let's, let's do something together. Like, let's do a short term rental. It's just a lot of due diligence, you know, like looking at, we've looked at the numbers in a lot of places, but it's like, where do you want to do it? Do you want it, you know, in the state? Do you want it out of state? Um, you know, somewhere, you know, you're going to have a good occupancy rate too. It's tough with the prices right now. I'm sure it's tough. To it find is. A good and deal. what scares me about long term rentals right now is that there's a lot of other states that are putting rules like rental caps on. They have that here in yeah, right. St. Paul. And I'm, I'm just saying it's, I mean, more, more than likely you're paying, you know, you're, you're wanting to charge a fair market, you know, rental rate. Um, but, you know, just the fact that there's rules and regulations I think, I think Saint, on that. I might be wrong, but I think St. Paul has a rule where you can't raise it more than like 3% per year. Per year, which, it, I mean, that that should make sense if you look at the numbers that yeah, should. But what if you buy a place that is way under rent? And what if, you know, rentals are so scarce that you're the only, you know, business is business. I don't want somebody to have to tell me what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not to sound greedy at all. Like, like I said, greedy. you'd want to charge a fair market <laughs> rental rate, but yeah. So I think I'm going to go, I, I'm going to start short term. Um, when do you think you'll pop into your first one? This year, for sure. This year. Yeah, like we're already in the process. Like we've been meeting about it and, you know. Who, I think who just, are you doing it with? Uh, Travis Metzen, my broker. You guys are going to partner on it? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And then if the right, you know, opportunity presents itself, me and Nate, um, obviously, if the right thing pops up, you know, we'll probably hop on that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he seems to just jump in. It does, but the... His kind of angle, which is obviously great if it can work, is you know finding some somebody that's willing to sell you their property off market so that you yeah. know it works. Though. You can set the terms and you're not having to bid you know twenty thirty thousand dollars. It over. works though, like that works if you no, if you it have totally the does. if you have your like you just gotta you keep good your network. ear to the ground for sure. Yeah, which I have been. You know we've we've been going back and forth. Do you like uh, remodeling? Then I'm guessing you love like getting I, a house and then remodeling it. I do, and that's. Like cosmetic stuff, I've done a lot of it myself. Like, um, you know, growing up with my dad, you learned how to do everything like that. I don't love it when it's my own house. I've noticed like if it was a project home, like if I got a, you know, an Airbnb and I knew, you know, I wanted to do like new flooring, trim work, paint, whatever, I'd love it. Um, I notice when it's my own home, I don't necessarily love it. Yeah. It's because my wife's making me do it. Yeah, it always takes longer than you think. Yeah, it does. And if you're not living there, it's a little easier to exactly. like justify yep. it. Yep. Plus, if, 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 it's an, if it's an investment property, you can think of it as sweat equity, mm -hmm. where you're like actually like putting yep. work in to, so you can get it to where it like, there'll be a, a, a lot more, a lot quicker realization of your profits on that than like on your house where you're just like sweating. Yep. I did that, like I'm, I run a painting company and I'd always get into projects painting and I'd hate it. It's like... You know, I should have all the equipment. It should take me. I know how to paint really fast. Like yeah. I should be able to do it. But yeah. then I'll hop in, and it's like I forget something, so I have to go, go grab something. It turns into like a month long project because then I get busy. I go do something else, and I come back, and it's just it's uncomfortable living in a house. A hundred percent. And I feel like you tend to like if you know another angle is like if you if you're gotten like an Airbnb or something that you know is going to be like a vacation property or other people are going to be staying there I feel like I would hold myself to a higher standard of like quality of work where yeah. it's my own house it's like I just want to get this done for the sake of having it done and you know yeah, it being yeah. over and then you start to notice the flaws in your own work yeah um yeah that's what I I'm really like at my house when I was when I had my house in in Richfield River I was uh I would leave imperfections only because I get like, there's so many 
customers. Did you do a lot of the work in that house? Because, yeah. I mean, it was gorgeous. Like, I only no, ever no, saw no, the no, pictures. No, 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 no. I was talking about say, the, the like, full remodel. No, I did yeah. literally nothing. Yeah, okay. Literally you just mean, nothing. like, your I'm little about DIY before. projects <laughs> yeah. before that I'm huge remodel was done. about all the stuff that they, like, I took a wall down and they put it back up. Was that Nate's company that did that? Yeah. 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 Yeah, they do good work. Tom. Tom was the one who, like, managed the whole thing. But uh, what I was saying is, like, when I would do stuff like that, like painting projects in my house, I would leave imperfections just to, like, because I deal with, like, customers all day long yeah. that are, like, fix that, fix that, fix that. So I would see things, and, like, my I have, like, OCD when it comes to, like, perfectionism, but I'll see it and I'll make it imperfect just because it's, like, then it reminds me that, like, you can't be perfect. Yeah, is it, like, a weird... Not to flip the interview on you, but like, I feel like everyone, when it comes to like a paint job, everyone has like a different standard too. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like some people expect absolute like perfection. Every single, and every people... single person has a different expectation when it yeah, comes to a paint job. I could see that. And then they all, you know, a lot of times they can do it themselves. So there, you know, there's a lot of, there's just a huge wide, uh, like expectation gap where it's like you have to set really high expectations up front otherwise yes. you will doesn't matter what you do you'll never hit what their expectations are yeah and it's you'd tough. be you'd be amazed some of like the houses that i show like the diy projects people do it's it's unbelievable like i sometimes want to take pictures and like upload yeah. them somewhere so people can see them it's really? just like terrible it's horrible it's like stuff. why would you even think you that them, you could do this do you yourself? get them to redo it or do you well i'm talking about houses that i show so not my listings but like oh. if i'm showing a buyer and it's like this tile job in the shower that was clearly a diy tile <laughs> job and it's just like mostly grout and then like you know like one little <laughs> tiny piece of tile i can like, picture it. it's just unbelievable it's like yeah there's certain things that people should just accept that they're gonna have to pay to have done rather yeah. than you know try yeah. to do themselves what would you say is like when you're trying to sell a house, what are like the top five things to do to a house to get it ready for sale? I think f neutral paint color is huge. Um, obviously, anyone's going to tell you like curb appeal. So like landscaping, even if you put fresh mulch around your, you know, your bushes, whatever. Let's see what else. Anything that might be like safety hazardous, like don't leave like a missing smoke detector or you know what I mean? Like how people will just take them off because they get annoying when the batteries mm -hmm. die. That's just I don't people notice it a lot. It's one of those things. Closet doors don't have them missing. Um, it adds a lot. And I know from experience in, in, in a listing of mine that once we added a closet door that was missing, the house <laughs> finally sold. So um, what is that? Four? Yeah. Let me think on this last one. I can take a sip and think, dude. This is really good. It is good tea. tea. It is good. Tea. We'll rate um, it at the end, so God, what's, start thinking about that. What's a fifth thing? Okay, so going along, this is not my fifth thing, but going along with, like, missing smoke detectors. Don't have, like, missing handrails because the more buyers have been in houses looking and they kind of get the process of things, like, that's something that's going to, you know, an inspector is going to point out or yeah. depending on type of loan, um, you know, an appraiser is going to point out. Um, and you'd be amazed how many people list their homes without even doing like the simple like vacuuming or dusting like the cleaning. ceiling fans. Like you ever <laughs> seen a ceiling fan with yeah. like two inches of dust I have, piled on my top? My house used to have really that. Bad ones. I see it all the time. Even if a house looks clean, like people notice that stuff. I do. I would say that's my like cleanliness, curb appeal, uh, do neutral you, paint. Yeah, for sure. Do you recommend? Uh, do you recommend like a uh, what are they called? The people coming in like... Like a stager? Stager, yeah. Staging the house. It's just, it's unnecessary in this market right now. We have such low inventory and a huge buyer demand that you don't have to, you don't have to spend the extra dollars for someone to come in and You don't think you get more money if you do that? It depends on the house. It really does. Like a lot of times when they're vacant and there's no furniture in there, there's no one living there, then, you know, it might make sense. Um, but guess what? People also like to walk in an empty, you know, townhome or you know, single family nice. house and just kind of visualize like, oh, I know I could put this here. So mm -hmm. it depends on the person. I know with like obviously soup, you know, anything over a million plus, you'd 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 consider having a stager come in. Yeah. We do recommend like decluttering for sure and depersonalizing things, like not a ton of family photos. Nobody wants to see your family's photos in a house that you that know makes they, they want to be theirs. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So when we remodeled, we, uh, 
we had a stager and uh we somehow you can think of my house well you probably hadn't even been there i hadn't been house. in there because you guys like had added uh, the last i had seen of it you had the um you had sheet rocked and like had the whole room upstairs kind of done but it was sectioned off into like two rooms you had like a little living area there and then like yeah, the back yeah. you know that yeah. was the last time i had seen it so. yeah so what we did up there is we put a wall up we basically turned a house that had I want to say one bedroom and one and a half bath into because one like legal bedroom yep. because I took closets out and yep. I took walls down. Mm -hmm. I like turned it into just a one bedroom technically. Yep. We turned it from a one bedroom and a one and a half bath into a four bedroom, three bath. So where you, I'm trying to remember the bathroom that was next to where your studio room was. And then you had that back bedroom on the other side of that. So you had a, I'm guessing a bathroom di directly below that. Yep. And then you put one. We threw a master bath, so a master suite downstairs, okay. which is like an unfinished basement. You know, I've never been in that basement. Not yeah, one time. Yeah, you didn't want to, dude. It was not, not one time. It was kind of a scary basement. Yeah, it was, it, I, I pictured it being like the basement in Home Alone where he's just terrified. Well, so like I was so, like I got so busy at one point running my business that, and that's an excuse. It's the reason why I sold my house, but like the the pipe downstairs burst. Yep. Like the septic pipe mm -hmm. or whatever. And it like flooded like shit water up yep. from the basement. And I go downstairs and I'm like running down to go check on something. I step around the corner in my socks and it's just like splash. I'm like, oh no, what is going on? And you got to think like my mom, she moved to Arizona. She left me in the house and I, I just took over payments and everything to yep. help her out because it's always been on the verge of like. So uh, like the title was still in her name. Like even it was in her name. I was it. just paying. I was just paying for it. Yep. Um, she's always the house has always been in and out of like foreclosure because she never really could afford it. She bought it for sixty thousand and still owed two hundred twenty thousand by the time it was done. And interest rates when she went to buy that house were probably like what nine ten percent back. Something then. crazy. I know that she had the money to buy it off at the beginning, um, but she didn't, and then she like refinanced, 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 got upside completely upside down on the house, yeah. and. Uh, so like when she moved, I took it over just as like a you go, don't worry about the house, I'll right. I'll take it over. Yep. But I had no idea how to care for a house, and I was I didn't want a house. I just was like living there. It was a huge, you know, not even huge, but it's like for me to be the only one living there. It's just like there's so many ex so much extra space. So when I went downstairs and I stepped around the corner, I step in, I splash. I didn't I didn't do anything about that for like three months. <laughs> It literally just sat like shit water in the basement. Yeah. Like, and I, I like, I remember finally calling somebody to get them out there. Basically what I'm saying is there's black mold down there. Like it was disgusting. Yeah. It was yeah. absolutely disgusting. So you didn't want to go down there. Nobody wanted to go yeah. down there. Yeah. It's funny because, you know, like there's so many agents that their angle is like everyone should own a house. And like, there's people like you and I, I totally respect this. Like, there are people that do not want to care for a house, like do not want the responsibility of, oh, if something goes wrong, I got to be the one to fix it. You know what I mean? Like no, I was, there are people out there yeah. like that, you know? Yeah. And that's what I try to tell people who are, are you know, super into. Hey, Bo. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, that's exactly how I am. As I moved out into an apartment, and it was like the best day ever. I and you like, live in Minneapolis, Minneapolis now, right? Yeah, on Nicollet. Okay. Of, like 35th and Nicollet, South Minneapolis. So I'm closer to Lake Street than your friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Leave it at it. Yep. No, yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I that's that's my stance on it. I, I'm down to, like, invest in property, but if I'm going to live somewhere, I want everything to be cared for because I cannot – do the i can't take care see, of see that's the thing even in like uh when you when you live like, when you're in a rental like guess what anything that happens on the inside there's somebody you can call a property manager like hey i need this to be taken care of like even when you own you know like a, a town home or a condominium like everything that happens inside the walls of that place like that's you know more than likely on you to fix mm -hmm. um and and every house is gonna have stuff with it like that's something people need to understand before you ever buy a house guess what i got a house that was built two years ago there's already things i've had to fix the drywalls whoever did the sheetrock in there was just absolutely terrible was it cracking oh it's just terrible it's just so bad like where the sheetrock like basically all the joints like where the ceiling meets the wall like you can see it's like separating you know you can see tape lines coming through and i guess what i get that that's something that's going to happen to houses mm -hmm. 
And this this winter, it's been weird because like, you know, a new construction in the winter, like when you get really cold nights, like we're hearing so many nails popping in our yeah, attic. And yeah. yeah, it's something that happens, but it's like, it's been intense this year. Dude, I think it's funny because when we flipped our house, um, like I just knew what the house condition was in and I knew what little amount they did to get it to where it looks. It was yeah. it, like, I looked it looked, at the, it looked super good, good in the pictures. From pictures. Yeah. Oh, of course. But like you go look at it and it's like, I was, cause I'm such a like perfectionist and like details. It's they, they wouldn't let us paint it. Like I yeah. wanted to paint it. I had a crew ready to paint it and they're like, you're too expensive. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like, so they like, had some guy in there trying like, I just look at it like these so houses is that, that are did, getting... did they like buy it from you to flip it essentially? Is that how it, it worked or did you... Contract you... for deed. Okay, okay. So it was from my mom. Contract okay. from deed from my mom. So me and Nate went on it together and then um, she was able to just like wash her hands of it. Yeah. No loans, yep. nothing. And you guys probably still made some... Uh... We made some money. There's was, there was mistakes made and it was definitely... All, they spent way too much money trying to remodel it. But I guess like the, the point is, is like... There's a lot of houses right now that are being flipped and like the amount of money put into the flip is always going to be less than if you were actually the one who like bought the home and we're going to make it nice for yourself. Yeah. The the thing is right now, like flips like with where the market's at right now, like they just don't make sense. Like Nate will tell you the same thing, like buying and holding. Sure. You know, buying and keeping as a rental, whatever. Um, but like flipping right now, like who's who has the money to buy a. <laughs> you know, a house that was $150,000 four years ago, five years ago. And, you know, now you're buying it for 100000 you know, maybe 120000 more than that. Like, yeah. who, you know what I mean? And, you and then money. you still need money to put yeah. into it to make it nice to, you know, try to sell it for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's where I always question. And I know that you're, you're, you're a realtor, so you probably don't share the same viewpoint. But I question how much more we can get out of the housing market before it completely closes. It's not going to, the difference right now is like people are thinking, they are thinking we're going to see this massive influx of foreclosures. The difference is with appreciation where it's at right now, people are able to sell their house and pay off whatever they're delinquent on their mortgage and walk away from it. Like pretty much wash their hands of it and walk away because you have that much money in equity. If you've been holding your property for two years, Mm. I couldn't tell you, I, I shouldn't have started that as a statistic, like I was going to give you a real number, but like you got like appreciation is supposed to go up quite a bit this year from last year. Last year, house prices are already, you know, through the roof, essentially. Yeah. Like I bought my house in 2020, February um, of 2020. Granted, I put, you know, I put like $30,000 down on it, but I could sell my house for almost $100,000 more than I owe on it right now. So you're saying that the point is appreciation and you have this up. much equity into your house. So the bank says, hey, you've missed this many payments. Like we're going to foreclose on you. Guess what? OK, before you can do that, I'm going to sell it. Here's your money. I made some money. I'm walking away. I'm going to go rent something until uh, prices soften. I, I don't see. think and I'm nobody can predict markets. You know what I mean? I don't know. No matter what. No, I'm definitely not. very. No good. matter what a guru they are. <laughs> guess what? I don't know. Like maybe the market will crash eventually, but. There's kind of no end in sight right now in the immediate, like this year, next year. I mean, look at last year and prices are still going are up. Are you worried at all about inflation and like how that's going to affect it? Definitely. And interest rates are starting to go up uh, a little bit, but still historically like 3.7. We were celebrating 4% interest rates on houses four years ago. And guess what? They got the Fed cut them to, you know, during COVID and all that, like people were getting loans. I think we were seeing them as low as like 2.3 2.4 on a 30 no, year mortgage i think like to me like that and i don't know anything about really the economy much i can't like i don't know much about economics but like the thought of them doing that during covid like quickly while they hand it's out saved, billions and billions saved of dollars my ass i'll tell you that because we had just bought our house um you know i had so basically i got licensed end of October, 2019, my license finally came in. I closed my first year or my first deal, um, December. So like the last day, so like within two months, I had closed my first deal by what was it? February, March, I had closed like a couple more and I was like, all right, you know, I'm getting my feet wet with this thing. All of a sudden COVID happens. There's kind of like a two week lull where all the buyers that I had in the pipeline just were like, Hey, I don't know what's going to happen with this. I'm scared. Um, you know, that's terrifying to somebody who's like, I put all my eggs in, in the real estate basket. Like, this is what I'm doing full time. I love this. And then all of a sudden, once interest rates got slashed like that, like I had the best financial year I've ever had in my life. Yeah, yeah. And people got into houses that 
with essentially free money. Like you're not. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the thing, though. It's like, how is that sustainable? That whole. I don't now. Now you're seeing these interest rates going back up, like almost a f- like definitely a full percent from what they were at certain points last year. Some people just made off to the bank, and then other people, you know, I, I just feel like what's going to give. I guess there's a lot of other like outside influences, though. Like with inflation where it's at now, like maybe that will slow things down a little bit. But the reality of the situation is, any house that goes up for sale in this state is going to be under contract in two or three days more than likely unless it has some huge flaws like everything is i can't, i forget the stat but yesterday um travis metz and my broker was reading me a stat off the mls it was literally like 1300 listings had went live as of monday this week as of yesterday uh 1100 of them were already pending really yeah that's insane. Yeah. Or maybe it was as of Thursday of last week. Maybe so that's how it So that's was. where it's like, it's questionable. To, I don't know. I'm so skeptical because it's like, in order to like, like if I were to take my money that I have saved and put it into a house and then it turns, mm-hmm. which could happen in two years, three years, five years, who knows, but either or. But yeah, that's that's scary initially, but think about it. It's, it's always going to go back up. Like yeah, real no, estate right, is a right, long hold right. investment. Yeah, you're right. You're that's right. what it, it does. is. It goes up over time. And, and what, what Nate said, it's like land and like housing. Is land d- is the diminishing. one thing they're not making any more of. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> like you go, you go through Farmington where, you know, I went to high school and stuff where I grew up. All this farmland that the Donleys, a family that pretty much had, you know, all the farmland there in Farmington, parts of Lakeville, it is all built up by different, you know, developers, different builders. Like, it doesn't even look the same anymore. It's insane. But land is the one thing, like, it's, it's always going always, to be worth something. Yeah, until we're just, like, building And it's up. the one thing that you never truly own, because even if you pay off a 30-year mortgage and your house is fully, your loan's fully amortized, you're still paying property taxes forever so you never really own your land and no, the government at any so time could come back and be like hey we need that we're gonna put a road there tough luck we'll give you this much money for it take it or leave it you yeah know? so would you ever get into land just buying land oh of course absolutely like if i had the if i had the money to do it there's a chunk over by i was looking just browsing the other day over by i think it's like prior lake or somewhere around there there's like 40 acres for sale like somewhere near like prior lake like the actual lake and it's just like god if i had the money i'd dude land in uh like arizona you just sell that to a developer the second they want to put a new neighborhood in there or whatever that's how you make money Mm -hmm. yeah buying the land but you also need the capital to do that you know yeah and hold like hold on who knows how long yeah in arizona you can get land super cheap but it's the desert. So yeah, exactly. Not much you can do with it. <laughs> it's cool though. I'd like to have like a vacation home out there. Like I'd do like a short term out there for sure. Yeah, you. Can, I mean, it's cheap. Have you looked at pricing down there? It's extremely cheap. Yeah, it is in certain areas. Like I know around like Scottsdale, yeah, Scottsdale and some of those places that are more yeah. you know touristy. But my whole thing is like this is why I've been stuck on like my um. I've not pulled the trigger on any investment property yet is because I'm such like a hands-on kind of control freak that I wouldn't want my first, you know, like rental property to be out of state somewhere. Like I know Airbnb has like their own property managers and cleaning companies and you can be pretty hands off with Mm -hmm. it. But like for me personally, I think I would want, I I would want it at least to be in Minnesota for my first one until I get my feet wet and kind of understand the process. Would you ever get into like multi- family housing like we're talking like of course like, like apartment buildings unit. Yeah. yeah oh absolutely again Do you I, plan on that i mean maybe one day we'll see how the stars align for that that would be obviously awesome and very profitable yeah to take but, a quick turn yeah oh of course unless you have something to say i was just gonna say you know at that point hopefully i could be super hands-off where it's just like my money and you're getting that passive income yeah, from all yeah. these units and you have your own property managers like at least what I've seen, you can partner on those types of deals where then you just have like a group of people own right, it and yep. then you just take money out mm-hmm. and then, you know, somebody else does the maintenance and stuff like that. Yeah. But to take a quick turn, let's talk metaverse real estate. Yes. What do you know about that? So I watched, I I know nothing about it. Okay. Great. <clears throat> this is going to be great then. So, <laughs> so what, but here's what I'm going to tell you. So 
obviously like it's been a thing like especially during covid when like a lot of people were like oh i'm i really want to buy a house but i don't want to you know go in someone else's house that's been shown 15 times today whatever so they started like the the virtual walkthrough videos which i'm sure you've seen like became like a big thing so you can kind of they use 360 cameras they pick stitch them and basically you can walk through the house by clicking and mm -hmm. turning with your mouse so I finally, I did get the Oculus Quest 2, so 256 the, gigabyte, and so I in the metaverse. I got it. What day was that, Bo? I called you right away. Was that Sunday? It was Sunday evening. I just impulsively, Last Sunday? yeah, this past Sunday, oh, wow. impulsively, I'm driving by Best Buy. Bo was over at my house on Saturday with the kiddos, and he brought the Oculus, and I'm like, you know what? It's time. I'm driving by Best Buy on Sunday, so I'm gonna go in there and just. Just ball out. Grab me an Oculus. How right? much is it? So how much does an Oculus? So rock? for the uh, 128 gigabyte, I believe they're 299. Um, for the 256 gigabyte, 400. And then you can buy the extra battery pack that gives you an extra like seven hours of oh, you know t on on one charge, and it like fits on your head way cooler, like the fastening they have, system. Yeah, like the, the twist or whatever. Yeah, like, it's got it on the back, like, like a, a snowboard helmet. helmet. Yeah, 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 exactly. So. Um, Anyway, I, I get the idea this week. I let Travis Metz and he had never tried any VR stuff and I, I bring it into the office this week and you know, he's like, this is so cool. I'm gonna get one. I got like two other buddies that literally bought them this week. Um, but anyway, I'm on YouTube VR the other night and I'm like, I'm gonna try one of those listing walkthroughs on here, you know, in the Oculus. And it was actually very, very cool. Like seeing it like that. Cause you could actually turn your head. It's not it's not you clicking a mouse and kind of dragging around. Like you're turning like you're and it feels like you're walking through this house. And it was like, you know, multi-million dollar mansion in LA or something. But um, I had the idea. I'm like, let's be like the first, like next, like, you know, nice listing we have that we're willing to spend, you know, a couple extra marketing dollars. Let's do one of these, upload it to YouTube VR. That way we can be like, hey, if you have an Oculus, check out our new listing at this, you know, go search this on YouTube VR. I just think it's, you know, it, it might not do anything for us, but then if you have, you know, more, um, you know, more expensive listings and higher end clientele later, you know, sellers and stuff later down the line, you could say, hey, we've done this. Have you seen, you know, any other local realtors yeah, do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think the the return on it will be too great, but I <laughs> just, yet, I, I think yet. it's important to like, you know, do things outside the box that other well, people aren't doing. I think you have to also change with the times. You oh, 100%, to. yeah. You have to pivot. So that is like semi, that is the metaverse. I hate the term metaverse, but. Yeah, cause right now what I'm getting out of the metaverse, if we're being 100% honest, you go into like a VR chat room and it's like a little kid like, hey, hey, hey. And it's like, <laughs> okay, I feel like a creep for being in here and then you're just out, you know? Is it, do you have to see the person? I've never been in it. Yeah, but you have like, uh, you know, like avatars, like you can custom build your own avatar so you could be like, you know, you could look however you want. Is this Facebook? Is this Facebook? So remember? Facebook owns Oculus. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Facebook owns Oculus. But as far as, then there's a VR chat room that's been out forever, but Facebook's working on the actual, like, like their, their, yeah, their kind of version of things where, which I don't know how that's going to work. Like you can't access it yet. Right. You oh, you can. Yeah. Is it, what did you just download it as an app? Yeah, it's an app. And then talking loud so it's on the mic but, yeah um say it with your chest bo yeah so you get on there and it's literally just a couple games and you can kind of interact but you can choose to turn off and on your like access you can be invisible in there so no one sees you but did, did they try to pull from like your profile like since it's linked to facebook no, like no, it's, okay it's, it's still a separate thing that you build out so yeah i tried to make like a smurf facebook account because i found out you have to like log in with your facebook and then it like defaulted to my regular Facebook anyways because, you know, I already had the app installed on my phone. Oh. Interesting times we live in though. You know, I, I'm just trying to not get left behind, you know? <laughs> you know me, I've never been like the most tech savvy guy, but I've found a way to make things work. Yeah, somehow. Yeah, that is true. You yeah, never really I've used never, computers, no, never no. really. Like I could always get by with doing like the bare minimum. Like if I was recording yeah. myself in Pro Tools, like I could cut, you know, I could, you know, I could record myself, but when it came to mixing, didn't care, didn't have the attention span for yeah. it. So you're going to hop into this whole new tech with, with a different point of view. I don't know if it even takes, like I don't have to be the tech savvy one. I just have to be the idea guy, you know? I, I give the idea to someone, I say, let's execute on this. Yeah, that's the best way to be. 
And that's why, you know, even to this day, like when I talk to uh, like Bo about you, I'm like, Tony's such a like, me and him used to get lunches where we would just talk about business ideas for so long because it's like, it's important to be around like-minded people and they're like goal-driven people. Like I've mm -hmm. realized that a lot more this past four or five years Super of my important. life, you know, yeah. at one point I was forced to like look around me and say, you know, I have all these friends, but like, are any of them people I should look up to? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The The answer was no for a lot of them. And then the people that the answer is yes, they're still around. And I have, you know, a lot of new friends that I've met in that time, but. That's super important. I think having, like being able to be around like-minded and also like, I think positivity is huge. Like yep. trying not to be around like super negative people because that will crush. One thing I've learned is like, when you're telling ideas to people, I've had this happen with a couple of people, you have to be very careful who you share it to because some people are super pessimists. So they'll they'll just shit on your idea. Yeah. And then you they'll it, shoot it down and it puts an idea in your head that it's like, you know, before well, in the you beginning even stages of an yeah. idea, it's super fragile. Because yep. you're like questioning, like, is this gonna work? Is it not gonna mm -hmm. work? I've shared ideas with people who are just like, That's never gonna happen. What are you talking about? I've been I know more about this than you and yep. it just kinda like it, it's so easy and I feel like if you're around people like that more than not then it's gonna be really hard to get anything off the ground no 100% no I absolutely agree with that and I think um, you know like self accountability too. like I've been doing what I call while we're on the talk of like self-improvement I've been doing I told Bo this but I don't write down um, like resolutions anymore I don't like to call them that but every year I kind of do like a self-evaluation I'll write goals like personal goals for the year because I think personal ties into your business like mm -hmm. if you're taking care of yourself that's gonna take care of you know everything yeah. else will take care of itself too um, but I started what's called the accountability journal so like if I handle and this is both in personal and business life if I don't go about a situation right and it could be like the smallest thing but if it's on my mind and I'm like I know I didn't handle that the right way I write it down I date it I try to time stamp it try to like write down the verbiage like exactly how it happened and then you know this is something that I kind of go back to every so often I say mm -hmm. am I still doing this if I am you know I need to like put more effort on like changing it mm -hmm. um, and then you know I told him because he wrote, we, we exchanged our 2022 yeah, personal yep. goals just to hold each other accountable. And mine's like 20. I wrote down 20 things, but I'm like, a lot of them aren't new things. So there's things I've already been doing that I want to keep doing because I, you know, I associate that with like, you know, a happy me or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry if I just went off on no, that. No, no, good. That <laughs> yeah, good. He's like, yeah. No, <laughs> I thought you were going to keep going. <laughs> You just kind of cut off. No, I uh, what I was going to say is like at the the thing I like about New Year and really just I like setting goals just because it's like it it gives you energy cuz like what's possible is super important. Like being able to like really look forward to something and have something that that you're like waking up every day to do and I like at the, you know, at the beginning of the year or at, you know, during like I feel like at the beginning of the year during during like New Year is a good time to like reset things. Yep. But then also remember that like as you go, like you can reset at any time. You can look at your goals. Yep. I've done it mul like this last year. I did it multiple times. I'm like really bad with routine, like just having like a routine. And I've been able to build up a routine previously where I was I was waking up at five. I was going for a jog every morning. I was like meditating. I was like I would te I would basically do this thing where you wake up, you go for a jog, 20 minute. Yep try to sweat first thing I'm, I'm talking like 5 a.m. Yeah, alarm right goes away. off you go outside you mm -hmm. just run outside I'm running around outside at yep. 5 a.m. and then at 5 20 I would come in and I would meditate and then reflect to try to get my head right and then at, at 5 40 I would do 20 minutes of just like learning and I would do that every single day and like it's I I fell off multiple times and like the only thing that really stops you from keep going, like after you, when you when you miss something, say you have a routine and you miss it three days in a row. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you get down on yourself and you, you start saying, I can't do this, I'm bad at this, that's when you like, you stop doing it. But yep. if you just, if you get that out of your head and just like reset and just go, mm -hmm. I feel like that's so it's like having like an accountability journal makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Then you can look at it and be like, well, I was doing this and mm -hmm. now I'm not. So I easily, you just have something to it. put your finger on. Cause everyone's going to go through slumps. Like no matter how much, like, 
you know, self-improvement, like the mindset, everything, if you have that right, like no matter what life happens, sometimes your, your routine gets interrupted by things beyond your control. Yeah. And it's like, you know what I mean? Like you got to get back to it eventually. That's why I don't like calling them resolutions because every time I've ever done that, I feel like that sets a start date and it's like, oh, well I have till Jan till January 1st to uh, not be doing yeah. these things. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. like when I got back into the gym this year, I started going back and like, September, like where I was actually like being consistent about it, maybe October, um, somewhere along there. I, I don't know an exact date, but you know, where I was actually consistent again, like I would go once maybe every other week or something, you know what I mean? To just feel like I was doing something, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not waiting till yeah. the first of the year. I'm, I'm done calling them resolutions. I just hate that because it sets like a start date. And that's why I also wrote like the goals that, you know, they're goals that I want to keep doing. They were things that I was already doing and things mm -hmm. I was already implementing into my life. But yeah. Do you do like regular, like uh, weekly planning? Remember we used to do that? Yeah, I've been like religious about Google calendars, but I don't necessarily, I have, so DCA title, a title company that we use, they send out these like old school, like calendars, you know, that have big blocks on each day that you can write down. Like and desk I've, calendars? Yeah, like a desk calendar. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. and. Yeah, I use that like super religiously. Like I'll write things down even if it's like the one like important thing. Like, oh, I have a listing appointment on Wednesday the 26th and I'll write that down because like obviously other things are going to come up in between. But like that's something I know far enough in advance that it just helps me. And then like I'm to the point now where like I know like today I knew I was like I'm going to leave, you know, at 10, 15, Bo told me to come a little bit earlier, but you know what I mean? Like you just get good when you have that kind of routine mm -hmm. and you're, you're good at scheduling. You kind of like remember things better. Yeah, for sure. Cause there was a time during like COVID, like I was still, you know, doing well business wise and I was showing a lot of houses and selling a lot of houses, but like I was eating terrible. I just, I didn't feel good up here. Like things were still happening, but I, in my opinion, that's just cause I got lucky. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, What's your routine look like then in a day? So one of my resolutions that I haven't really stuck to, but it's like- Goals, Yeah, goals, goals, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, goals, <laughs> personal goals, is um, check in with me before I check in with the world. So like before I roll over in the morning and grab my phone to like see if I got new emails or whatever the case may be, like take like five minutes and be like, how do I feel today? Like waking up, like how is today gonna be? And I've like tried a lot of like manifestation in the morning, like today will be a good day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that kind of stuff. And then another one, like there's many in between, but one that I do every night is I go, am I proud of what I accomplished today? And I take, and that kind of falls into the accountability thing. And lately I can say like, yes, I have been proud almost every night that I've gone to bed lately. That's awesome. Yeah. So like, those are like two that if you can do that in the morning and then at night, you know what I mean? Like Sets you're, you up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, other than that, like I've, I've realized like fitness is important for me, like just having things firing on all cylinders, you know what I mean? Like endorphins, whatever the scientific How reason How much time is. do you spend in the, in the gym? Uh, typically like 45 to an hour every day. Wow. Yeah. Every day. Not 40? every day. Sometimes I don't go on weekends. Like if I miss a day, my goal was four times a week and then more cardio. Like I was going to the gym and lifting, but I've always do been- Do you kind live of close a, to the gym? Yeah, like a block away. That's what I was telling Max is uh, he knows that LA Fitness, but they got bought up by Asporta. Mm -hmm. And now their, their cleanliness is going downhill. No, like the other day I was on a tricep extension machine and I looked down and Rachel had a membership there. She's going to cancel it because she's like, it's just gross in there. And I looked down and there's like four pieces of gum stuck in the machine and like all these dust and like <laughs> oh, dust bunnies God. and stuff. And I'm like, ugh. How much like, are you paying for a membership? I mean, it's cheap, man. It's like $23 a month. So I can't complain. It's that close. I'm not going anywhere else. Like, I, I don't really care about that. But yeah, yeah. I you think know, in a time it where like key. cleanliness should kind of be like, you know, important to, you yeah. know, a business of that size. Yeah. I find it weird that, you know, the mirrors are always just disgusting. Looks like somebody came up and just sweated all over them. <laughs> just rubbed their face <laughs> yeah. on them. Yeah, that's, uh, that's gross. But yeah, so... <laughs> So you wake up every day, you go to the gym. What time do you go to the gym usually? See, I don't have like set times. So like my routine is not like that because like 
in real estate, like there's no, like if somebody like emailed me like, hey, I need this done, you know what I mean? Like, I wanna see this house today. I gotta do a little bit of research, look at what time, you know, I can fit that into my schedule to go show them, you know, this house or whatever. So I just go, I get up, I have my coffee. Like I do my, like, how do I feel today? Um, I brush the teeth. Sometimes I'll wash the face or I do, you know, I'm back into my facial treatment thing where I do a toner and all this stuff. That's, that's part of my routine, but we're not gonna get into yeah, that. That's next time. And then like, I don't always go to the gym before the office. Like sometimes I'm just like, I'm feeling good right now. I'm going into the office right now. Mm -hmm. But I realized like last year I was working from home a lot more. And I know this is gonna sound pathetic, but my dog like takes advantage when I'm at my home office working and she'll like, oh, take me on a walk, do this, you know? And like, that's, that's part of my routine too. But then she'll, you know what I mean? So now I'm at the point where I'm like, if I just go in and make the drive to the office every day, I'm gonna be way more productive than I would be at home. Yeah. I'm yeah. one of those people, like I can't really like work from home. I feel like everybody's one of those people. I just think some people don't admit it. Cause yeah. I, I worked at home for a long time and I'm way better in the office. My problem is once I drive to the office, it's hard to get myself to go to the gym. Yeah, I feel like that. Like usually I have to go beforehand. Like it's very rare that I'll go to the gym after I go to the office for a full day because I work in South St. Paul too. So that's yeah, I was gonna say twenty five minute drive there, twenty five minute drive. You just know, to go to the office. Yeah. yeah. Do you do do you like uh, morning workouts better than night workouts? Yeah, hundred percent. It yeah. makes my day like it just makes me feel like more energetic. And I've also tried to cut out as much caffeine. Mm -hmm. I was drinking like four cups of coffee a day last year at one That's point. That's nothing compared to what I was drinking. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was drinking like 2,000 milligrams a day. <laughs> I don't know how to measure. Like I would make strong pots. Well, the only reason know? I know how to measure is because I'd be drinking. So the only thing I haven't this, stopped. This is the mic stand that you used to wrap into. Dude. Is it? Yeah, it's my This mic. thing's still looking good, man. <laughs> yeah. thing looks brand new. I've been using it a long time. Um, the one thing I haven't stopped is my nicotine use. Like I'm still vaping and then when I'll quit vaping, which I've done multiple times now, I'll get like uh, the nicotine pouches. Yeah. You know, like Max those Zins is, or Max whatever. Is big on vape. He's the same thing. You can't. It's tough. That That's like the hardest, like, yeah. I don't want to say that's the hardest thing I've ever had to stop doing, but it's for whatever yeah, reason. I'm lucky I quit. I quit tobacco before vaping was big. It was, they just had the little cigarette thing. So yeah. It wasn't like the a, blues or yeah. whatever. Yeah. They, um, but for me, it's like, it's almost, and I know, cause I'm really good at like looking at things at, you know, for what they are. But for me, it's like, I don't feel, I can run. And my lungs don't feel affected from vaping at all. Um, you know, there's no tobacco in like those little pouches. Not at, like sometimes I'll have like a little bit of something in the morning, like it's a little phlegm, but like, yeah, I don't know if that's vape related Slowly or not. Your, your neck's just going to But like cardio wise, like I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like it, I've not noticed it affect my lungs in any way whatsoever. So it's like, oh, well, it must not be hurting me. I think the thing that I think I can see being annoying and that is you always need it. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Because it turn, it goes for <laughs> cigarettes. Was like you maybe every two hours go out for a break or every hour or something. But then like once you vape, it's like you get so used to just. Yeah, and <laughs> like yeah, there's some like everybody who vapes like that. Like it's just glued to them. Like if they're, you know what I mean. Like you'll never. I always grab my pocket. Like oh shit, where is it before I leave somewhere? Yeah. But well, that's another thing too. Like with cigarettes, I could feel them in my lungs. I stunk. Like people are like, oh, you smell like cigarettes. Like. Yeah, cigarettes, just, I used to love them. They're and then so once gross, I quit, man. They're just nasty. Dude. Every once in a while, I'll like walk by someone that's like smoking a cigarette though, and I'll be like, kind of smells good, just I, randomly. Like the thing with cigarettes for me, and it, probably any addiction, is like I get more into the fantasy of doing it than like actually like what yeah, it feels like. What it, yeah. Like I'll see somebody on TV that looks really cool and they'll smoke a cigarette, and I'll be like, ah, I got to start. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yep, yep, cigarettes. Yep. Like, and I've said, I've thought about it <clears throat> numerous times. I have no, like, craving. I have no want to smoke a cigarette, but I've always thought just like, man, I'm just going to start and see what yeah, it's like. Yeah, It's like the worst thing you could possibly mm -hmm. do. Because it's yep. like, it took me like, like five years of like trying to quit. Maybe four years of actually trying to quit to actually like finally quit. And I got lucky because I like made a bet with Nate. Nate, um, I, we made a bet that every summer we'd make a bet where we'd both quit something. I'd be quitting uh, smoking cigarettes and and it was our last time where we were going to work together so I knew that there was not going to be another bet after that so mm -hmm. I, I made the bet for the summer I quit all summer and then I didn't start again because I remember that period of time yeah, yeah. we were we were hanging out yeah because I used to I used to smoke back then I don't know if we ever smoked cigarettes together yeah we did oh for sure we, we did. did yeah okay, yeah because I didn't stop smoking cigarettes until like 
2016 probably. Yeah. Like I would, I would like, I still had a vape then. Like when yeah, vaping right. became like yeah. a big popularized thing, but I would still smoke cigarettes. Like what did you smoke? Um, well, I used to smoke 27s mostly, yeah. you know, and then I, I was Do smoking those uh, Marlboro 72s, the short ones in the winter. <laughs> like, they became a thing, and then I was just, like, super addicted to those. Why would you buy those. shorter? That doesn't make any sense. Because they were, like, supposed to be stronger. Like, there's a higher, like, you know, nicotine, whatever in yeah, them. that's how they get you. Um, let's hop into something else here. So <laughs> Yeah, no more cigarettes. <laughs> no more cigarettes. Talk. So, what keeps you up at night? Mmm everything i'm a super overthinker like that's a i stopped doing like any melatonin like i fall asleep naturally every single that's night melatonin is bad like, it is because i feel groggy it. from it i don't care what people say but i felt groggy from it I waking every up time i use it yeah. yeah i don't not not really a fan of it um but i guess it could be the most random thing dude like i'm just my mind races at night like no matter how tired i am i'm gonna like there's weird stuff that pops into my head do you watch um, tv before bed yeah a lot of the time we do yeah. That's I don't know, but it's never about like, I'm never thinking about, you know, Any something I watched thing. on TV. It's like something that'll pop in my head like, oh, I forgot to do, I forgot to change the whole house filter today. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. random stuff. And I'm like, I got to do that tomorrow. Um, I don't, I don't really have anything like conscience wise, unless, you know, my, another one of my goals is to never go to bat go to bed mad like so if you know me and the wife get into it about something like i want to resolve that before we go to bed mm -hmm. um so like it's never anything like weighing on my conscience anymore that used Nothing. to be the case but what about no. anything that like you're super stressed out about is there anything like that or no there is i'll have to tell you off off camera okay god damn it we don't get the <laughs> yeah we don't well, get the exclusive yeah yeah there is but it's it's a good thing you know it's i'll let you guys thing. know on the next the yeah, show yeah. what he says. Spill the beans. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bonos. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, let's hop into this one here. I got. Uh, it's only we got about like five minutes before it's noon. So. Okay, and so noon is our time. Well, max. Do you think I'm uninteresting, Bo? Is when his is. Oh, we got time. Yeah. You think I'm uninteresting? Is that no? Is you're that, super you're trying to get me out the door. I I should have cut. I should have moved the topics quicker. We had a lot to oh, say yeah. though. Absolutely fine. We got time. Bo hates it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, so. Um, what was your worst experience as a local rapper? God. <laughs> oh my God. I what a, that'd question. Be a really good question. Oh my goodness. And I want names, dates. Uh, well, I mean. Milagro. <laughs> no, that was your worst. Yeah. We won't go there. <laughs> that wasn't even local though. Like when you're saying this, like I'm thinking of like, what's the worst thing that okay, happened yeah. in Minnesota? Okay, not yeah. while we were like out of state or touring or. God, obviously, you know, it's just tear like at certain points, like putting my faith in the wrong people that I was like, oh, you know, mm. uh, good old Christopher Whidbey. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, what's up? Uh, <laughs> who, yeah. uh, what else? Like just, you know, so like, just sketchy characters, really. And like putting like, you know how much time and, you know, even money we invested in things for them to not get like for me, it was like. To not get the response that you expected in your head from something. And that, mm. I, I joke saying that, you know, once you've done music and you could, if you could get people to believe in you and your product as a musician, which is a lot of work, as you know, and as Bo knows, like if you could do that, like almost any other job is probably going to come a little bit easier to you. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. That's how I felt like moving from music to business. It was like immediate like what you put in, you get out immediately. Yep. Whereas music, it's like you just dump, 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 and dump. please hear me, please. It's like and almost like you're begging at one point and then finally you get, you know. Well, yeah, I remember going to Iowa with you and just handing out mixtapes. Yep, mixtapes. Remember uh, DJ Unk? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Unk, dude, that was like a, a big deal. That was a pinnacle moment. <laughs> I was wearing those Hawaiian button-up shirts. That was with Chris, shirts. too. Yep, yep. Yeah, that guy was a tool. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's he's It's not even around. worth putting energy no. into that guy. No, Please. that's what I'm saying. Like in everything's, so we're so far removed from that. Like even me from like being that happened when I put out a project in was it November this past year, just for the love of like, hey, I made a cool project, I'm gonna put it out. Um, mm -hmm. but then like when it was getting response, I was like, oh, I I didn't want that. <laughs> like I just wanted like you know I wanted to put my art out there again. You yeah, know it had yeah. been a long time, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, do you want to get on this interview for this? 
And I was like, ugh. I like, had the idea. This is actually an idea I'm still rolling with is I always, and you knew, probably knew this because I always wanted to do, I won't, I wanted to make a, a, like a pseudo character that you could be hide behind. Yep. Like I always wanted to hide behind something because yep. I didn't like being like the face of What was of the what name was you had for it again? Adrian probably. A- was, was it? Was it? I thought, yeah, I thought you had multiples. And Piccolo, Adrian. Those are, those are like. I used to joke, me and Nate talked about it. I used to joke about monkeys I had in my head. Three of these yep, chimpanzees yep, I remember that, that in my head. But uh, yeah, it's crazy. But um, I think like, I always wanted to like live behind uh, like a character. And I've thought recently like with the NFT market booming, I'm gonna get into NFTs. I'm, I'm currently why? working. Why, but do you really think NFTs are- Listen, this is why, I'll tell you why. Cause I'm obsessed with telling stories. And when I made music, I didn't just like, I, I didn't just like making songs, just like making albums. I like creating, like I liked creating the whole backstory of the character that, that was yep, my yep, rap. Yep, and I know that, yep. And like, I would write to that. So it was like, rather than thinking like, is what I'm writing. Like pe- I'm Tony, it, this is me, this is exactly. my life. It's like, Instead this that, is. It was a character and I'm just yeah. writing to that character. So like, my thought is with NFTs, I'm not even thinking about get rich or anything like that. You can sell like digital art now and mm-hmm. you can live behind it. So you don't have to show who you are and you can, you can be, like, you could have a rap, a rapping character that raps, that puts out songs as NFTs and you never, re- you never like show who actually made it and who's actually rapping. So like, I think there's something there. See, that's cool. You're looking at it as like an actual art form, which it is in like, that's all I six think months cool. ago. Um, my wife was asking me like, what exactly are NFTs? Like I get, you know, and I explain it to her and she's like, oh, and I'm like, it's going to be something that we're going to see a ton of just like, and I guess like any market, you're going to see a ton of just like super dumb ones. Like, it's, and now it's getting played out. Right uh, now. It, it's just all I see. Like I'll scroll my Facebook timeline and it's like, I just and bought Gary, this on open sea. This and Gary you know, V does up here. I'm going to always take shots. But like when it's like when it's well thought out art and it's being sold in that way, like I think it's really cool. Like Bo made one and sent it to me, sent me a time lapse video that he made of him making it. And you see like the process go into it. Like that's really cool to me. Um, But a lot of them are just like me. And there's utility behind it because like, like I'm thinking about how to use the blockchain the way it's meant to be used. Mm -hmm. Like not just selling an NFT. That's not the point of the blockchain. Like, you can you can create a smart contract that is it's pre-coded into it so like for instance there's one going on right now that i was following and i'm getting into it for the first time so i'm on discord like it is nuts and it's so so beyond me like i don't like spending time on discord but what they're doing is they have a giveaway they're giving away ten thousand of these things called teddy bear squad it's like a specific yeah it's, it's kind of stupid it's so they actually have generative software that generates you draw a couple things and then it generates ten thousand unique pieces right like they're all unique every single one is unique none of them are the same because it just the code will generate it but then they have like 12 legendary teddies that (laughs) this is stupid but uh (laughs) legendary teddies that if you buy you'll buy one and it will become the legendary teddy and then that one is it's actually unique hand-drawn like uh, a it's not generated and then there's one god teddy right so this is it's again it's all stupid because teddy it's like, god <laughs> yeah teddy god <laughs> so it's it's all stupid you know but the thing that's kind of cool is the person who has the legendary will automatically in the contract get ten thousand dollars worth of ethereum and the person who gets the god teddy will automatically in the contract get a hundred thousand dollars of ethereum you can make teddies together and create baby teddy you, you have to pay you get tokens that are called like toy tokens and you have to use those toy tokens to um he's just turning off your camera <laughs> okay um you have to you you can mate uh you can mate teddies using tokens because you can rent like a hotel room with the tokens mm-hmm. and then it will create a baby teddy which is a third nft so you get two and then you get a third one and you know it's that is cool and they built a story behind it like it's it's still kind of like gimmicky yeah but i think you can do things like you know neopets did you know Yep, yep. Neopets like yep. website, mm-hmm. like you can go yep. on and yep. so like my thought is like why don't you you could do Neopets that you collect on different websites. So like you could have a website, say you have a website, we could put a ne- you know NFT pet on your website where you can click and get that and but and it just allows people to go to websites and like get their NFT kind of like Pokemon, you can go to different stores. Me and Bo were talking about this. Um 
But the idea is, is like you can you you can use there because there's smart contract in it. So like when you get it, it can automatically do things, right? You don't yep. it doesn't take a human to send the ten thousand dollars of Ethereum. Yeah. It literally once you get it, it just automatically goes into your account because it realizes that you're you you bought the legendary Teddy. Yeah, <laughs> which is a, it's it's crazy. It's just to me. Um, God, I forgot who was telling me this the other day, but basically they're doing NFTs with like sports players now, and I don't even know how this works, but like if LeBron James in a certain game hits like a spin move, boom, they're like capturing that like moment. I don't even know like how how it's like, you know, how you can send this from one person to another, how it works, but there's like, it's going that far now that like, oh, him from 0.07 seconds of this to this that move that he did there that is now a, a non-fungible mm. token and it's like how saturated could the market possibly get like there's cool things about it don't get me wrong but we'll any again but any that's... time like this happened happens with cryptos too like anytime one becomes like this big deal you know it just seems like a million other shit coins come out yeah and, yeah, yeah you know well and i think like that's why i think the utility is for instance like like they could attach NFTs to real estate, right? Mm -hmm. So when you buy a house, you get an NFT with it and it, it will pay like the person who built the house will automatically make 10% of the sale forever because you have to have the NFT to own the house. You can do stuff like that. You yeah. can attach it yep. to physical goods and mm -hmm. then you can also get a, you'll be able to see like where people, like who you'll be able to look at it and see who has owned it. You'd be able to look at it and you know, like, the, yeah, seeing, a, like, the sales history is cool and having that as part of, you know what I mean? Like, because uh, that, that kind of plays into the novelty. Like, if some famous guy or some guy you look up to, say, um, who's someone you look up to? Say, if David Bowie was alive and Birdman. he owned Birdman. Okay, Birdman <laughs> owns this, you know, NFT that you want. And, you know, eventually that gets sold to someone else. And then you buy it from that person. You're like, oh, this is so sick. Birdman owned this exact yeah, one. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, having that that record of it, I guess, is cool. And that could hold value in itself depending on who owned it or why they bought it in the first place. Yeah, and I think that that is going to be what we'll see is the, that's so like when I say I wanna make an NFT project, I'm thinking of ways to use the actual smart contract differently. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. And like it takes obviously like get coding and you can't just like throw it on OpenSea yeah. and See that stuff's dragging. so far above my head. Though. Yeah, and it's above mine, but I, it's not above mine to go on Fiverr and find somebody. Right, that yeah, that, that could do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. I don't know. I think it's interesting. I think uh, we'll see a lot of, like you said, there's going to be in the next like six months to a year, there's going to be, I mean, right now, literally right now, crypto is crashing. I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's terrible. Like I'm down. I had a lot of money. money in there. Yeah, me too. And I own a full Ethereum that I bought at like, I think I bought it at 2900 on like one of the dips where I was like, I don't want to be too late. Like this was at some point, like within the past year and a half, maybe two years. Like I think I bought it at like 2,900, but. So with Ethereum, I got into Ethereum at 1,200. I ended up. Are uh, you lucky ducky? Well, no, I'm not lucky anymore because what happened <laughs> is I kept buying into it. I ended up with eight Ethereum. Oh my God. And did then you, did you hodl? I, I did for too long and then I got out. So it's at least lower than where I got out so I can try to get back See, in. See, but everyone, like, even with the, the Shiba Inu, like, that finally hit. And Brady convinced too. us <laughs> to buy it. And we were like, oh, whatever. It was like 120 bucks per million when we did it. Um, and he's like, you need to get on it now, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll throw a little money at it. <clears throat> so I ended up buying, like, 7 million more later when I read a little bit about it. And then all of a sudden it had that big spike in whenever that was. And... I should have just gotten out there. Like I would have made, you know, probably like a grand and or I something. Too, yeah, I just traded my my Shiba just recently into. I trade. I treat everything unless it's like life changing money. Any investment, it, it's. I look at it as like it's the longer I hold on to it, it's going to be worth more. It's going to be worth that one day. You know what I mean? I'm not looking to make like gas money. You know, you want to make yeah. like you know. Yeah, money yeah. You could hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, that's how I am too, and I I think. Like it was fun. It's funny because like over the last what whole year, crypto was like 
just rallying. And not just crypto, stocks too. It was just really easy to make money in the stock market. Yeah. Anywhere you put your money, it's going up. <clears throat> yeah. And I I was laughing when I first got into it. I was like, this is so easy, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Why doesn't everybody do this? And then it mm-hmm. started turning. Yeah. Like, it all, it all fell Yeah, apart. I got out of like a lot of other than like my IRA and stuff, like a lot of the stuff I had in my TD Ameritrade that, you know, I just got out of it. I'm like, I might as well, like I made a little bit of money on certain things and other things, but I'm like, I don't know enough to be like, and I don't have the time to sit here like, playing day trader all day you know what i mean that's tough yeah i mean my thought though is this is money is going to there's inflation happening meaning and this is where i started realizing like really looking at it like if you have cash and right now easiest terms like you can buy a burger for say a dollar right in like in short amount of time, you can only, it's gonna take you $2 to buy that same burger. Mm-hmm. And so basically your money cut in half. It's like it's like losing half your money. So like if you can put it anywhere where even it just keeps value at the same, or yeah. like it, it, it raises with inflation, like it's better than keeping cash. I feel like cash is the dumbest thing you could keep. See, and that's like where I'm like torn. So you're gonna think this is weird, but like I keep, the majority of my money like other than like you know my home you know my car i have like a nice camper and stuff like like just regular assets like that like i keep a ton of money in my savings account one because i i mentioned earlier i'm a bit of a control freak i have some in like cryptos some in like you know td ameritrade obviously a lot in like a um my roth ira or traditional ira but I like in my mind, I have to have X amount of money in my savings account. Be- but even though I know that that money is going to go towards like an investment property or something like that, but like I'm just like, if I don't have that much in there, especially as someone who's an independent contractor, like for me, because yeah. I pay out of pocket for my health insurance, mm-hmm. um, you know, I got a million bills to pay every you month. You need cash. And also, this is the. But I have to have like kind of a more, more than well, I think I should have in there probably you know I what I mean I think like it's it's worth to noting to feel comfortable it's worth noting that like if if you wanted to take advantage like it's if you look at the stock market from march like mid march to like like September November uh, maybe up to like November of last year yeah yeah of 2021 yeah yeah okay um it is absolutely wild how like how the the stock market grew yeah they always use the excuse that it's always a change and you know what i mean like anytime someone new steps into office there's always this period where you know like, when was when did we get locked down was that am i missing a year here yeah you're missing yeah it did last okay, there was a so, whole year so biden got an office what january well not quite january last year because the whole riots and all that so yeah i missed a whole year so out. so when i say march i meant march 2020 so if you look at right when it dipped mm-hmm. right right when the whole the stock market completely yep. slid down and then from there up until its peak like it was such a short amount of time to get to the peak and in order to take advantage of that dip you had to have cash so like when you have cash on the side like it makes sense to have cash because if you have your money in the investment and then every all you know it starts to slide you can't take advantage of the actual like dip when yep. it happens mm-hmm. so like, you have to have cash to like make a good investment yeah and people are trying to explain like mar- having a margin account on like td ameritrade like some of my buddies that are like way more and uh you remember john barsness yeah. he like gave me a lot of tips and stuff and i should have listened to him because he really knows what he's talking about oh yeah he, he was big on yeah it, and he just... still is yeah he's done well but he yeah, I just like I, I just didn't ever take the time to like really figure out what's what's the difference between a margin account. You know, like sometimes some of these guys I know do like swing trading. I'm yeah, like, and if, I just really don't have the time to be looking at my phone all and day. Like and options, like, yeah. yeah. I think if you don't know, it's trading, the best yeah. thing you don't do it. I yeah, think. exactly. Because people. Yeah, I feel like I kind of missed the like I'll throw some money at stuff that I think is going to, you know what I mean? But yeah. But I, I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about at all. So let's hop into, what time is it right now? Uh, it's 12, 12.11. 12.11. Okay, I'm going to grab something out of the bucket here since I have it. So get ready, man. I'm ready. Okay. This is the exact one I wanted to grab. Is it? Yes, it is. So if you could have any animal as your partner in a cartoon buddy cop movie, what animal would you have? In a cartoon buddy cop movie, like the like he's my assistant, I'm a cop, and the animal is my assistant. He's your buddy. Yeah. 
Not your assistant. Maybe he's, he's your He's like my partner. sidekick. Is that what it asks? He's like sidekick, yeah. Specifically partner. Um, Get up any animal as your partner. And this is a cartoon animal. So, like, we're trying to keep it PG because, like, my thoughts is, like, I got this massive gorilla that I'm like, yo, get him. And, like, instead of having, like, an attack dog like cops have, like, you got, like, a gorilla that will literally rip someone's face off. Or are we that's trying to keep perfect. it? like? No, a, no, no. That's that's your okay, answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's your answer. Yeah, I just, you know, my mind went towards, you know, what animal could be the most violent towards a perpetrator. Yeah, well, <laughs> a lot of heads are going to be getting ripped <laughs> off in that buddy cop movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What kind of cartoon are we talking about here? Okay, here's here's another one. Um, what is one book you've read that has had a major impact on your life? Ooh, this is excellent. Right now, I am reading Almost Done with Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. It's a memoir, um, but so many like life lessons from him and like just such a fascinating dude. I don't want to sound too much like uh absolutely think Matt McConaughey is one of the coolest humans that ever existed. A lot of wisdom in that guy. And just he puts like little notes and handwritten pictures to go along with each story from his life I've and then it's like really notes. Good. It's so good. I'll I'll uh let you borrow do you it. Read, when I'm done. read or do you listen? No, it's read read. I read read it. Um Yeah, if you let me borrow it, that'd be dope. Oh, absolutely. I'll yeah, yeah I'll send it with Bo or if you want to meet up for lunch. So that was uh Green Light. And we're gonna we're gonna post this. Yeah, so. Matt McConaughey. So good. Such a good book. I got like Matthew McConaughey. I got maybe twenty, twenty five pages left. <clears throat> All right, let's get this last one here. Okay, so what advice would you give someone trying to get into real estate right now? Don't do it. Okay, that's I'm it. Not, no, no. <laughs> One liner. Um, it's just I I get this a lot. Like so many people only see like oh he's he, they see a closing picture and it's like no Nate's selling all these houses but they don't understand like what and a lot of people just get into the business. That's why like there's more there's more agents last year than there were active listings in the mar on the market. You know throughout mm -hmm. the country. That's kind of like the fun statistic of last year but i mean most of these people don't most agents last a year if that you know what i mean the majority of them because it takes so much there's a lot of like down periods where you're like oh my god i have nothing in the pipeline what's going to happen you know what i mean am i unemployed now like sometimes you'll be non-stop yeah, for yeah, a month yeah. straight and then you'll have two weeks where it's like so do it's i even hustle. have a job it's, so a, it's an everyday hustle i think instead of saying don't get into it say like if you're ready to get into it no yeah that it's not all fun yeah it, that was that was my joke yeah. don't do it you yeah. know um but i i've been being honest with people i get those messages a lot like on facebook because people will be like oh you, you know it happens like right after i'll post a closing picture they'll be like hey how'd you get into the business what do i need to know i'm thinking about getting my license um one, you never, never stop learning. Like there's always stuff that I'm going to learn. And I, you know, I, the reason for my success, I guess, so far in the business is because I had a really good mentor and, you know, somebody that I could bounce things off of. That's and that's Travis. kind of the, yeah, Travis Metzen. And that's kind of the benefits too of working for a smaller brokerage and, you know, trying to turn that into a dynasty is that. Did you know him before? A little bit. We were Facebook friends and we knew like a lot of mutual friends. I don't think we had ever like cross paths like that but we knew each, we were like facebook friends and i knew of him he knew of me type of deal mm -hmm. so and then we became like really good friends obviously so past if, you, few years. if you're trying to get into real estate you should find somebody that is doing it have a good small. mentor because a lot of i'm not i mean different things work for different people like a lot of the franchises i'm sure are great and maybe they will provide that one-on-one -on -one training but for me it it really worked out well that i have someone that's now a friend that i can call that's you know way more experienced than me and i can be like hey never ran into this situation how would you go about this mm -hmm. and believe me when i you know my first year he got a lot of those phone calls um now i've i've figured you learn very now quickly maybe you need to take somebody under your wing and that's that's kind of my goal too so, so anybody, i'm gonna kind of start my own team i think is anybody out there looking actually what you should do is call nate yeah but that's the thing too is like i know how much one-on-one -on -one training it goes into to like train an agent you want somebody that's going to be willing to go out there and like do what it takes to sell houses mm-hmm so yeah, I mean, I would want to do it. I would just be selective, like I know Travis you has gotta been. Gotta find the right person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the last thing I'm gonna say is, uh, well, no, not the last thing I'm gonna say because I'm gonna say something else too. But uh, I do want you to leave leave the audience with one thing. So like, think about the people who watch this. What what is one piece of value you can leave them with? Um, I think self accountability. Like that's such a that's been a huge. Thing that I've implemented into my life is like 
I still make mistakes. Don't get me wrong, but like hold yourself accountable. Like I think that's super important. And whatever it is you do, whether your personal or your professional life, um, make note of your mistakes and try not to repeat them. And if you do, what's you know what's leading to that? Why are you doing that? That's good. Self accountability. Yeah. Yeah. Look in the mirror and, and be willing to yeah. admit when you're wrong. Yep. Cool. Okay, so uh, before you stop it, we like, gotta just get him out of here. <laughs> yeah. no, we kidding. we gotta rate the tea here. So tea head, tropical punch blend, herbal tea, caffeine free. First, I want you to say what you thought of it. Actually, um, I'm gonna give it. Uh, Is this a ten system? It's ten, and I'm gonna be super strict, kind of like uh, the guy from Barstool Sports who does yeah. pizza ratings. Yeah, pizzas. Yep. I'm gonna give it. It's really good. I'm gonna give it a a, a seven. Seven cups. Seven cups. Oh, is that the, the rating system? Seven cups. I thought it was actually really good. I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight. There you go. You heard it here first. I like it. You guys it. are going to want to go out and get some tea head tropical punch blend tea, even if you're not tea drinkers, because I know Nate's not a huge tea drinker. I've actually been getting okay, more is, into it. I like lemon ginger a lot. So that's it. That's, that's it. all we got. That's the show. Thank you for coming. Sweet. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. And cut it. Now. Beautiful.